The Perfect Gift for the Perfect Sister by Sister Mike. Sweetie Belle loved heartwarming Eve. It was her favorite holiday of the year. It wasn't just because of the presents or the big feast or the overall cheerfulness of every pony in town. She loved heartwarming Eve because it was the one night in the year she was guaranteed to have a full family affair. Sweetie Belle adored her older sister more than any pony else could ever think of. Sure, she loved her parents dearly too, but Rarity was her idol, her hero, her star. She admired Rarity so much that some days she would just sit down and think about how lucky she was to have a beautiful unicorn as her sister. Ever since Rarity had moved out and decided to live on her own in the Carousel Boutique, Sweetie Belle had always felt that their home, their parents' house, had felt a little empty. Sometimes it felt like she was only an, an only child, and she was just admiring Rarity from afar. But on Heartwarming Eve, that was the one night when Rarity was guaranteed to come over and spend time with them as a whole family. And it wasn't just that she would come over for the night, she would spend the night over too. Sure, Sweetie Belle had slept over at Rarity's house countless of times. Her sister was their parents' go-to babysitter whenever they decided to go on an exotic trip. Other fillies would just be upset but that their parents were going away on a big trip without them, but not Sweetie Belle. That meant she could spend time with her big sisters at her big sister's place. This heartwarming eve was going to be extraordinarily special. Not only was Rarity coming over, as per usual, and not only were they going to spend the time as a big family of four, Sweetie Belle's favorite feeling was when all the four of them were together. The whole family atmosphere made her heart melt. But this year, for the first year ever, Sweetie Belle was going to buy Rarity a special present, all on her own, with her own earned money. Sweetie Belle had been saving up her allowance over the past few months. She had taken extra chores, helped neighbors, and saved every last penny she could find. And now, with her savings tucked neatly in her saddlebag, Sweetie Belle headed into town. It was only six days into heartwarming Eve. Only six days to find the perfect gift for the perfect sister. Sweetie Belle had walked down the snowy streets of Ponyville, her booties on, and a scarf wrapped tightly around her neck. She waved when she saw Apple Bloom pass, with, pass by with Applejack, but she didn't stop to chat. She was on a mission. A mission to find the perfect gift. She had stopped in front of the sugar cube corner. Maybe she could buy Rarity something sweet. She thought about it for a second, and then shook her head and moved on. She didn't want to buy Rarity something she could devour in a minute. She wanted to get her something that would last. Something that had meaning. She passed by the flower shop. Maybe some nice flowers. But those posed to have the same problem as sweets. Flowers would be nice to look at for a few days, but eventually they would die and wither away, and her gift would be over. Flowers weren't go any good either. Maybe she could buy Rarity a book. A book about sewing, perhaps? What if she thinks I'm insulting her? That I think she doesn't know how to sew well enough already? Sweetie Belle thought. She quickly shook her head at the book idea. Sweetie Belle sighed. Nothing in town seemed to prove worthy enough for her sister. Disappointed, Sweetie Belle slowly made her way back home, stopping every now and then to peer into the window of a shop and consider another unworthy gift. Sweetie Belle sighed heavily as she entered the kitchen of her home. She slumped her bag onto the floor, her savings inside clinking as it hit the ground. What's wrong, Sugar Bear? Her mother asked, as she continued to make lunch. There's nothing in town worthy enough as a present, of, present for Rarity. Sweetie Belle whined. Why don't you buy her something nice to wear? You know how your sister is such a fascinista. Her mother suggested. But the only place that sells clothes fashionable enough for Rarity is Rarity's shop. I can't buy her something that she made. Sweetie Belle exclaimed, her voice cracking. Her mother laughed. <laughs> Oh my, yes, I guess that's true, she said. Well, tomorrow your father's going to Cantalot. Why don't you tag along to see if there's something there you can get for Rarity? That's a great idea, Sweetie Belle said. She jumped with excitement and ran out of the kitchen to find her father. The next day, Sweetie Belle boarded the train with her father and set off to Canterlot. Once they were there, the stallion told Sweetie Belle to meet him back at the train station in two and a half hours. Sweetie Belle was excited that she was allowed to roam the great city by herself. She smiled and waved at unknown ponies as she walked down the streets. The street lights were adorned with festive wreaths, and heartwarming eaves with colorful lights were strung in between them. Sweetie Belle entered a few different boutiques, browsing the fashionable items, trying to decide what would be the best present for her sister. 
Every now and then, she'd find something she thought would be absolutely perfect, but she wouldn't buy it because she would never be sure enough. The time was coming near, and soon she would have to leave. She only had half an hour left to find something for her sister before she was going back to Ponyville. What if she didn't find a present in time? What if she didn't have anything to give to Rarity and Heartwarming Eve? It was only five days away now. Trying not to panic and to stress, Sweetie Belle slowly started to make her way back to the train station, peering into all the shops along the way. The train station was coming closer, and she was getting further and further away from finding a present for Rarity. She could see her father in the distance, waiting for her on the platform. Twenty minutes still to go before the official time meet. Sweetie Belle was about to give up and just go meet him at the station, when something caught her eye at the train station souvenir shop. She ran to the window and pressed her face against it. In the shop's window was a beautiful hat. Different shades of blue swirled around in an elegant hat. A white rose sparkly, with sparkly gems featured in her front, held on by a silk white ribbon. It was a perfect gift. Sweetable motioned to her father that she'd be a minute. She ran inside the shop and approached the hat cautiously. Holding her breath, she turned over the price tag. Fifty dollars! That was exactly how much she had in her savings. Doing a little victory jig, Sweetie carefully brought the hat onto the cash register. An elderly mare sat behind the register, a smile on her face. What a lovely hat, dearie, she said kindly. It's for my sister, Sweetie Belle said excitedly. I saved up all my money so I could buy her the perfect present. Oh, what a nice little filly you are. She is lucky to have a sister like you, the mare said, with a wink. Would you like me to wrap it, dear? No, that's okay. I want to wrap it myself, Sweetie Belle said, a big smile on her face. The mare chuckled softly. Ho, 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 fear enough. That'll be fifty dollars, please, the mare said. Sweetie Belle carefully handed over all of her change. She waited patiently as the mare counted it all and printed out the receipt. Just as she handed out the box, the hat neatly inside, Sweetie Belle heard the train whistle. I've got to go now. Have a nice heart swimming eve, Sweetie Belle said as she ran out of the shop. Hope your sister enjoys the hat, called the mare back. Sweetie Belle smiled as she boarded the train with her father. She had found the perfect present at last. When they arrived back home, Sweetie Belle rushed up to her room to wrap the present. She had begged her mom a few weeks earlier to buy the last roll of pretty silvery wrapping paper, the perfect wrap for the perfect sister. Sweetie Belle pushed aside some of the assorted fabrics and a sad attempt at a scarf that were on the desk beside her small sewing machine. She carefully placed the hat box onto the desk and gathered her scissors, tape and wrapping paper. Although it was a blistery cold outside, Sweetie Belle opened her window to let in some air. Her room felt a little stuffy, and she didn't want to die from suffocation in the middle of wrapping Rarity's perfect gift. She couldn't have any stress. This was it. The last detail in her mission of finding the perfect gift. She had carefully laid out the wrapping paper underneath the hat box. Sweetie Belle began to fold the paper over the box, but unhesitated. She wasn't sure if the cashier had taken off the tag. Sweetie Belle's mother had to remind her father to cut the price tags off of things, so that now was ingrained in Sweetie Belle's mind as well. She took off the lid of the box and carefully took the hat out. Sure enough, the tag was still on. Sweetie Belle carefully put the hat back down on top of the box and went to reach for her scissors. And then, the unthinkable happened. Just as she had turned her head away, a gust of wind shot into the room. Her window burst open further and a flurry of snow flew into the room. The hat began to dance on the desk, and before Sweetie Belle could stop it, the hat flew out of the window. No! Sweetie Belle cried. She dropped the scissors and ran towards the window. The hat danced in the wind, falling gracefully, but just as fast as the burst of wind had come, it had stopped. The hat plummeted down and landed on the ground. Sweetie Belle grabbed her scarf and ran outside. The hat had only landed a few feet away from her house, but the damage had already been done. Crying, she picked up the ruined hat and went back inside. It doesn't look that bad, Sweetie Belle's mother said, her foreleg around her filly's shoulder. Sweetie Belle sobbed, her shoulders heaving. 
It's ruined! She cried. They sat at the kitchen table. The hat, indeed ruined, was in front of them on the table. The hat had been soaking wet from the snow by the time Sweetbell had found it. The white ribbon had peeled off, and the rose looked wilted. The gems inside the rose had gotten scratched and no longer shined. Sweetbell's mother had tried to dry the hat by the fireplace, but now the hat was misshapen and the edges were wavy. The beautiful swirls of blue were now drab and looked green. The perfect gift was gone, and all that remained was a distorted corpse. It was the perfect gift, Sweetbell cried. I worked so hard and saved so long for it, and now it's completely ruined. Sweetiebel's mother sighed. She didn't know what else to say. She tried to console her young daughter, but she was right. The hat was completely ruined. Well, you know, sweetie, it's the thought that counts, her mother said. It's not about the present you gave at heart, Swarming Eve, but the heart that you put into it. You know, sometimes homemade gifts are worth more than those bought in stores. But it was perfect for her. She's my big, perfect sister, and I just wanted to buy something that reflected her. Something that she'd like. Sweetie Bell sniffled. If she's really the perfect sister, then she'd treasure anything you made her, anything you gave to her with all your heart. Her mother said. But, but I can barely make a scarf. Sweetie Bell said. It's not about the quality, sweetie. It's about the heart, love, and thought that goes into it. Sweetie Bell had thought long and hard about what her mother had said. And eventually, she decided her mom was right. There was no way that Sweetie Bell could remake the ruined hat, which now sat at her desk on top of her sewing machine. She could try and remake something else just as nice. The very least she could do was try. Because of the whole fiasco, her father gave Sweetie Belle twenty dollars to go find something else for Rarity. Sweetie Belle used the money to buy some sewing supplies. She bought various shades of blue fabric and some silky white, some blue gems and some thread. She thought about buying a pattern, one that she saw was close to what she had in mind, but she shook her head. This was going to be her design, her own creation, her very first important piece of sewing, aside from the CMC capes of course. She had only four days left before Heartwarming Eve, four days before Rarity was coming over, four days to make the next best thing to the perfect gift. Sweetie Belle did a few practice runs with the fabric she already had at home. She barely slept as the days went by, but each practice piece came out better than the last. Finally, she took the plunge and she sewed the real thing, carefully wrapped the finished product, scribbled a note on it, and placed it under the tree. Then. Heartwarming Eve came around. Rarity arrived at her parents' place just as her mother was setting the table. She placed her gifts under the trees and unpacked her overnight things in the now guest bedroom, the room that had once been hers. She was surprised to find that Sweetie Belle hadn't come to bug her yet. She was just as surprised when her young sister sat at the table, eating quietly. Rarity tried to exchange conversation with her sister, but Sweetie Belle only gave one-word answers. The filly's mind was elsewhere. Rarity shrugged and talked to her parents instead. When it came time to exchange gifts, Sweetie Belle handed them out. She gave out gifts to her parents first, and then she moved on to Rarity. First, she handed a gift from their parents. It was a new pair of slippers, something Rarity had been in need of. Oh, they're lovely, darling, Rarity squealed, trying to numb. Rarity expected Sweetie Belle to move on to her opening her own presents, but instead, the filly handed Rarity another gift. Rarity was surprised. She looked at the tag on the box. To Rarity, the perfect sister. Love, Sweetie Belle, it said, in neat, though slightly childish script. Rarity looked at her sister in surprise. Sweetie Belle avoided her gaze. Oh, sweetie dear, you didn't have to get me anything, Rarity said. The wrapping paper sparkled in the firelight. Rarity carefully unwrapped it, revealing a hat box. Sweetie Belle had gotten her a hat? Rarity had simply adored hats. In her opinion, not enough ponies wore hats. Excitement brimming inside, Rarity carefully opened the lid. But there was no hat inside. In fact, the box was practically empty. Instead of a hat, a long piece of carefully folded fabric sat inside. Rarity pulled it out. The fabric was of different shades of blue, tightly woven together. 
There didn't seem to be any design pattern on the blue of the scarf. They seemed sporadic and were in different mismatched sizes and shapes. The stitching, though sturdy, was somewhat sloppy, a loose thread here and there. The scarf went oddly wide at some point and about two thirds of the way down. At the bottom there was an odd ball of white fabric. It looked like a terribly misshapen attempt at a rose. Random blue gems had been stuffed into the middle of it. Despite all the flaws, there's something magical about the scarf. Sweetie dear, where on earth did you get this? Rarity asked. I... I made it. Sudabelle said quietly, still avoiding her sister's eye. Rarity stood up from the couch. She wrapped the scarf proudly around her neck. Sudabelle looked up to her sister, tears in her eyes. Rarity pulled the little filly into a tight hug. It's perfect, Rarity whispered quietly. A perfect gift from the perfect sister. The End <laughs>